Hey, would you like a yummy? There you go. Nom 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 nom. Adventure Cape Solve the riddle Great and small Adventure Cape Adventure games He loves them all Every day is a new quest Exploring north, south, east to west Point and click to find The answers that we seek Adventure Cape Hello there, fellow adventurers! A couple of years ago, I looked back with reverence at my favorite adventure game of all time. That's right, it's Phantasmagoria 2, a puzzle of flesh. Um, I mean, King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown. Now we're continuing the story with King's Quest 2, Romancing the Throne, a play on the 1984 film Romancing the Stone, though I'm not quite sure what the significance is. Here's our hero, King Graham, and just look at how buff he looks. He's obviously been working out since he ascended the throne at the end of the first game. Must be all that beanstalk climbing. Alright, now it's time for some poetry. He may be buff, but that's not enough. He longs for a queen, the fairest ever seen. The magic mirror will see things clearer. Behold, the mirror reveals a tower, and like He-Man, Graham has the power to rescue the maiden trapped within. His quest, he must now begin. All right, that's enough poetry for now. So Graham swaps his crown for his trusty adventurer's cap and sets off in search of his future bride and travels to the land of Kalima. Or is it Kolima? Kalima. Kalima. We start off plonked on the shore, having presumably been dropped off there by boat. Or maybe we swam all the way from Daventry? The water does look inviting. Let's go for a swim. That tune never gets old. Exploring the shore, we find a rock that just happens to be the perfect shape for a mermaid to sunbathe on, and a rocky archway that I just love swimming through. Ah, it's the simple pleasures. We also find a clamshell, but there doesn't seem to be anything special about it. Or is there? Bollocks, I was sure there'd be a pearl in there. Under the clamshell, though, is a sapphire and diamond bracelet, which we can examine in more detail in the inventory and notice that it would fit a small wrist. Just imagine if we happened to find a mermaid lounging on that mermaid-shaped rock. We could give the bracelet to her as a gift. Well, I can dream, can't I? Oh, we're back where we started. Did we just walk around in a circle? That's right, traveling north or south in Kalima will eventually loop around. This phenomenon is explained in the King's Quest Companion by Peter Spear. Graham knew this was part illusion. The geographers he had consulted had informed him that the magical law of containment operated in this western part of the continent. For reasons now forgotten, or perhaps it was whimsy on the part of the multiverse, Movement to both the north and south in this part of Kalima eventually turned back upon itself, contained as if inside some transparent cosmic donut. Venturing inland, we come upon what looks like a quaint inviting cottage. Let's see if anyone's home. That's what happens in Kalima when you break into someone's house uninvited. A geriatric wolf jumps out of bed and eats you, though seeing this in all its gory detail would obviously be too graphic. Well, if at first you don't succeed... 
Try, try again. And again. And again. And again. Eventually, we're lucky enough to catch Grandma in her human form, though knowing that she's really a wolf, it's probably best to kill her now. Good guys don't kill kindly little old grandmas? Since when? I always thought that Grandma turned into a wolf, but realized while making this video that they're actually two different characters. If that's true, then how does the wolf suddenly end up in Grandma's bed wearing her clothes? I asked this question on Twitter and Tamsin Mug replied that Grandma's house is a quantum time chair, which goes along with the whole cosmic donut theory. In Grandma's mailbox is a basket of goodies, and just nearby we meet Little Red Riding Hood who explains that the goodies were stolen. How did they end up in the mailbox then? Cosmic Donut. Let's give the goodies back to her, we just need to get close enough. Slow down, Miss Hood, I'm trying to give you your goodies back. Hey, come back here! Right, suit yourself, I'll just eat the goodies myself then. And so, Little Red Riding Hood never got her goodies back, and was doomed to wander Kalima forever searching for them. This isn't game over for Graham though, like it would be in King's Quest V if we ate the custard pie. Mmm, that was the best custard pie Graham has ever eaten. That dream I had about the mermaid actually comes true later on, and you can give her the slim fitting bracelet although you lose points for it. But if you give her the flowers that you would have got from Little Red Riding Hood, you gain points instead. Then she summons a giant seahorse that Graham can ride to the bottom of the ocean. Hang on, since when can Graham breathe underwater? Oh yeah, since the Sega Master System version of King's Quest 1. Here we are in the well leading to the dragon's lair. I wonder how long we can hold our breath. I guess forever. Waiting for us under the sea is King Neptune himself. Hey, did you notice how that giant clamshell was open for a moment when we entered and there was a key inside? Neptune must have seen us coming and thought, no way this muscle bound, water breathing, land dwelling freak is just gonna ride into my kingdom on a seahorse and take my golden key. Fortunately, we already found Neptune's trident lying around on the shore so he gives us the key in exchange. What's the key for you ask? Well, before going on our undersea adventure, we first have to cross this bridge, which looks unstable and tottery. We're a brave adventurer though, so let's go ahead and cross. All right, we made it and we even got a point. What if we walk back across? Hey, we got another point. Why don't we just keep doing this until we get maximum points? <laughs> Bollocks, that'll teach me for trying to cheat. So here's the deal, you can only cross this infamous bridge seven times before it collapses, so use your crossings wisely. On the other side of the bridge is a door that looks like it leads nowhere. You can't take it with a pinch of salt and enter like in King's Quest 7. The door says whosoever chooses to seek the key for this door will undoubtedly make a splash. Hmm, make a splash, what could that be referring to? Exploring more of Kalima, we encounter some familiar enemies like the evil enchanter who turns us into a frog. And the Olympic dwarf who steals your treasure. We get a chance to retrieve the treasure though when the dwarf's not at home, 
and also eat his chicken soup while we're at it. I wonder if that soup could have been used for something else. Nah, Graham needs to keep up his strength and stay buff. Buff man, na 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 buff man. <laughs> Sorry, that was a ridiculous segue into this screen, where sometimes the Batmobile will appear. That's good for a laugh, but I always thought it was out of place here. You know, when there's something that doesn't belong in a particular setting. There's a word for it. What was it again? I believe the word you're looking for is anachronistic. Cheers, Space Quest historian. SQH actually made a fair and balanced retrospective of all the King's Quest games. His theory of King's Quest 2 is that Graham was high and hallucinated everything. I think SQH must have been high to get through the entire King's Quest series, even though he swore he'd never play them on his channel. I will now fondle my copy of King's Quest 1. Anyway, this cave is the lair of the evil witch Hagatha, who will cook you and eat you if you're not careful. It's not really explained in the game, but if you read the accompanying story, she's the one who trapped the girl in the tower. In the center of Kalima is an island surrounded by a poisonous lake. How poisonous? Let's find out, shall we? Yup, that's pretty poisonous. If we want some respite from game overs, we can seek sanctuary at the monastery, where we find a monk praying. Let's join him in prayer. Wow, did you see that? Must be divine intervention. The monk asks for our name. He doesn't understand our name. He must die! Alright, I guess we asked for that one. Let's brave the bridge crossing again and open the door with Neptune's key. Another door? No way! This one says, whosoever chooses to seek the key for this door should set their sights high. So, to get the next key, Graham has to get high. Space Quest Historian was right! But seriously, the only drugs in this game is the magic dust we get from the fairy which makes us immune to evil. That's right, Hagatha, bugger off! Ha! Be gone, Enchanter! Better luck next time, Dwarf! Oh, I guess it doesn't protect you from falling into chasms. What we need here is a lamp from the local antique seller, but this isn't just any ordinary bog-standard lamp. So, we ride the magic carpet to the clifftop where there's a poisonous viper in our way. Graham, watch out! A poisonous snake! If we rub the lamp again, the genie gives us a sword which we can use to kill the snake. At first, I thought this was the only way to progress, but lo and behold, if we rub the lamp one more time, the genie also gives us a bridle. Great, how is that gonna help us? Eh? What the fuck just happened? We threw the bridle on the snake and it turned into a winged horse? Am I missing something here? I know, let's consult the King's Quest Companion. 
The way the story goes here is that Graham really did intend to kill the snake with the sword, but accidentally threw the bridle on it instead. Well that was bloody lucky wasn't it? Turns out an enchanter, probably the same one who turned us into a frog, turned the winged horse into a snake. There's much more to this story in the VGA fan remake, which we'll get to some other time. Hold on, this will be a little accelerating. This is a good time to mention that this is the DOS version of the game, so on the next screen there's a hole in this rock that wasn't there in previous versions. If we look through the hole we find an easter egg for Space Quest 1, which I might give my own fair and balanced retrospective of one of these days. Another gold key is just lying there waiting for us to pick up and stick in the next door. Another door? Yes way! This one says whosoever chooses to seek the last key must have a stout heart. This isn't much of a clue, and the solution lies on the other side of the poison lake where we can see a castle. There's a ferry service run by a creepy chap in black who is actually Charon. Charon stands in his boat, eternal ferryman of the dead. Who also makes an appearance in King's Quest VI and Mask of Eternity. Only souls of the deceased may embark thus. Thou art a man living. He demands payment so we can give him a treasure, but as we know, there's always another way of doing things. And no, we don't have to throw a bridle on him. Let's just kill him and take his boat. You can't kill something that is already dead. Hmm, good point. We actually need a disguise which we can only get from Grandma by giving her the chicken soup from the dwarf's house. If we didn't already eat it, of course. She gives us a black cloak and ruby ring with the initials CD. CD? Count... Ducula? Disguised as the mysterious CD, Charon then ferries us to the island where we're faced with our toughest challenge yet, making it through the thorny paths of the castle. I can't tell you how many times I impaled myself on these thorns the first time I played this. If only I hadn't killed the snake, I would have got the magic sugar cube from the winged horse that makes you immune to the thorn's poison, so you can go tell those thorns to go stick it somewhere else. There's a couple ghosts guarding the castle door who come right out of Michael Jackson's thriller. Good thing we're wearing the disguise or they turn us into a ghoul. There's something not quite right about the perspective of this castle. From the outside it doesn't look much bigger than we are, and inside the furniture is huge. This CD must be a giant dwarf. The tricky part here is navigating the stairs. Eh, hey, what happened? I guess we're doomed to fall down the stairs for all eternity. Okay, let's find out who lives in this creepy place. Count Dracula? Run away! Run away! Ah, oh, he got us. Let's try again. Wow, we fell down the stairs and Dracula bit us. Double whammy! Oh well, I guess Dracula can't climb stairs. Of course, the only way to kill a vampire is to drive a stake through its heart. I think he got the point. There's actually two keys hidden in Dracula's coffin, and one of them opens this chest containing a sapphire and diamond tiara. Along with the bracelet we found earlier, there are a total of five jewels like this hidden around Kalima, which Graham plans to give as a wedding gift to his soon-to-be bride. That he's never met, but let's not let that get in the way of true love, shall we? Now we can finally open the third door, which opens to yet another door. Okay, just kidding. 
It leads to a psychedelic land of blue sand, orange sky and purple water. Yes, that's right, we've arrived in the Caribbean. Check out the size of this fish, it's bigger than we are. Let's kill it. We should have learnt by now that killing things is not the answer, and instead we must save the fish and ride it like a cowboy to a nearby tropical island. There's nothing around here except for an amulet just lying there waiting for us to pick it up, with the word HOME on it. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Oh, we're back at Castle Daventry. Feel like we forgot something though. Oh, that's right, the princess. We have to rescue her. The tower stands waiting for us in the center of the island, and only some winding stairs and a hungry lion stand in our way. Unfortunately, we can't pet the lion. And hey presto, we found her, the girl from the magic mirror, and she's even more beautiful than we'd imagined. I'm King Graham, I'm here to rescue you! Sorry, what I meant to do was... Enough smooching, let's get this girl back to Daventry. And so Graham and Valenice, yes that's her name though Graham only just found that out, are wed by the priest who we tried to kill earlier, and all their friends are there to celebrate their union. Wait, is that Hagatha and Dracula? The Enchanter and the Thieving Dwarf? This isn't a wedding, it's a trap! Ah! I believe the what you're looking for is anachronistic. Okay, don't use, don't use that. 